where I'm from, where's the color of the sun, the scent of the sea? Hello everybody, welcome to Giada Live. Giada Valenti here in Las Vegas, 2 p.m. We'll be like 140 episodes or something, remember? We've been going live for 100 days since March 18, non-stop every day. And you guys of the Circle of Love, it's been with me all the way through. And now we go live three times a week, always at the same time, 2 p.m., which is 5 p.m. for you guys. I see you appearing, uh, appearing over there on uh, the East Coast. Uh, ore 22, 23 at night, 22 and, uh, in England and Ireland, 23 in Italy, of course. And uh, good morning to you in Australia. I see already some people from Australia waking up 5 in the morning, right, for you guys. 
Good morning, buon giorno. Of course, Giada Valenti, for the one of you, I see some new people, some new faces appearing on the chat, probably because of our friends and fans of my guest of today. Welcome to you guys. Where are you watching from? Um, I'm Giada Valenti. I'm a singer and songwriter in sign language. We do some sign language here every time, thanks to Diane Fiorentino. And I was born and raised in Venice, Italy. And uh, I live in Las Vegas. The sun is shining like every day. Almost every day we have the sunshine in here, so we are always happy, happy, happy here in Las Vegas. I hope you guys are doing well uh, and are happy today too. Uh, we always have uh, uh, positive things happening here on the program. And today also my guest, you're going to adore him and love him. Of course, he's a musician, he's an amazing uh, human being. I see also appearing also Cecilia East. Cecilia, there is going to be also a little bit of your brother Nathan. I know Cecilia is the sister of the one and only Nathan East. She is always with us like Nathan is uh, is often uh, so I uh, just what, what can I say today uh, we're gonna have of course my guest and then in the end we are gonna have the birthday and events in history like we do already for four months right three months what is it three months and something since March 18 so birthday and events uh, in it and in the history today but first without further ado we are gonna have my guest I want also welcome because I see many people appearing on YouTube Facebook uh, Twitch and Periscope so guys Welcome to all of you, and of course, later the video will be uh, collected on jada.live, and you can always watch it, of course, also on Twitter, Twitter and LinkedIn. How many social media pages do we have? Of course, as I said, I go live three times a week here on social media, and then on Sunday, since almost a month, we do uh, the uh, Love Song Sunday on my Patreon page. You're all welcome to join me, and uh, it's at the same time, 2 p.m. Uh, yeah, Vegas time, and uh, you know, here you are, my sir of love and when you join me on patreon you are my team awesome i love this sign language i know only the positive things i know thank you for watching all of this thank you diane for teaching me this and a very important one i love you and i really do guys without further ado shall we introduce my guest i'm sure he's already there waiting for us so uh, i see also antonio appearing from ireland guys here is my guest little clip for you so, my guest today is a Danish-American contemporary saxophonist, songwriter, producer with fame all over the globe, Michael Linton. His style has been described as soulful and authentic. He plays alto, tenor, soprano sax, although he favorites his alto sax for his solo projects. He has released, to this day, 11 solo albums. He has 25 singles that have charted on the Billboard and uh, Radio and Records Contemporary Jazz Radio Charts. Michael has toured regularly uh, in his entire career, an uh, average of 60 to 80 shows a year, and in recent years he joined Michael Bolton, one of my favorites on tour, as opening act and special guest. More than 350 shows together in more than 40 countries in amazing venue like Sydney Opera House and Royal Albert Hall. There's a picture for him. In 2016 and 18, he even was invited by Mary Manilow to join his One Last Time Arena tour as special guest. And in 2019, he joined the amazing saxophonist, another one, amazing friends, David Koss, for the Dave Koss and Friends Gift of the Season Christmas Tour, alongside David Koss, Jonathan Butler, Melissa Manchester, and Chris Walker. He has performed play numerous times for the Danish royal family we'll be talking about, and was even asked to play a special song at the royal wedding in Denmark for future king, Crown Prince Frederick, and Crown Princess Mary Donaldson of in the Frindborg Castle. Michael also manages his own wine company, the Linton Wines, which is based in California, as well as cigar company, Michael Linton Cigars, which manufactures his products in Honduras. He served as cigar columnist for Wine and Ma Jazz Magazine. He also has recorded his first Christmas album last year, I Love Christmas, a foreign affair Christmas released last November with uh, one of the singles was George Michael Lacks Christmas featuring French keyboardist uh, Philippe uh, Salsay and also includes duet with superstar Vince Gale and um, extraordinaire uh, David Kaus and percussionist Louis Conti, some of my favorites. He can be seen, uh, 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 that's in a CD by the way that you need to have, he can be seen playing the American National Anthem at the Dodger Games, sharing the stage with a 
amazing musicians like Dave Stewart from the Eurythmics on guitars and during COVID-19, yes, you can enjoy his music on stage, we'll be talking about it too, and in quarantine duets with some amazing guests that you can find on his YouTube channel. And beside music, wine and cigars, he's also an amazing father of two beautiful kids and husband of an amazing, beautiful woman. woman. I've had the pleasure to work with Michael for a special project that will be released soon with some amazing friends and musicians like Checha Lara, Polino da Costa, you're going to see all the pictures of Monstagnaro, Rodrigo Rios, and also the brother of Cecilia, the one and only Nathan Easter was my guest a few weeks ago. I'm beyond happy to have today with me here with us, the one and only Michael Linton. Michael, welcome. Are you there? There you are. I am here. Yeah, um, I, I am so, <laughs> I don't even, I'm so flattered and honored and embarrassed by this video you just did. I had no idea. What a beautiful thing you guys put together. Wow. I, I mean, and it's, and thank you for that. But it's only a, a small part of your uh, career because yesterday, I mean, every time I have these amazing guests like you, amazing friends, I'm blessed to call friends, you guys have done so, I mean, yesterday I went through all the music and you know what, I'm a, I adore saxophone. Actually, one of the reasons when I came to America was because of Clive Davis. He invited me to New York to work with him. It was because he thought that my voice was similar to Sade. So with Sade, with Sade, we did a lot of demos with, with him. And then you know what, Michael? It, it turned out not using the saxophone, we had a trumpet. Well, you know, it's okay. They need no. some love too. The trumpet needs love too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I have to call Clive Davis and say, we should have kept the saxophone. <laughs> How are you doing, my man? I am doing wonderful. I mean, it's it's uh, we we're in very very uh, uncharted territories right now. You know, we're uh, uh, I don't know what the music business is going to look like once we come out of, out of out of all of this, but we're somehow finding a way to navigate um, what's happening. You know, adapt to this new new whatever that may be, and and. Uh, there's been some, for me, there's been some uh, amazing silver linings, uh, including being able to watch my son, my first son, my yeah. first child my, of my own, grow up right in front of me. He just turned six months the other day. Not that that's really a birthday. We have to wait until <laughs> one, but we still celebrate six months. Why not? Of course. And, um, and you know, I had taken two months off. Uh, right after I finished the uh, the Christmas tour with Dave Cross, yeah. I'd taken two months off, kind of, I had one show or something, but I'd taken time off to prepare for the birth, and then I was going to go on a tour <laughs> on the road pretty much every weekend. I had three trips to Europe planned at, at, at uh, a week and a half at a time, and come Martin, March 13th, Niente. screeching halt, and... Uh, it was like, uh, it was crazy. And it just all stopped. So, you know, so you, there's a moment where you're going, uh, now what? What is happening? What do we do? And then, um, you know, I, for some reason, I, 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 had, I had heard about State, as a matter of fact, I'd heard about Stagered, which is an online yeah. um, uh, live stream platform, different than, say, Facebook Live or YouTube. Yeah. Um, it's more of a concert experience where people have to buy tickets. You have to sign up with Stage to become a part of their community. Uh, but it, it, it offers a, a whole nother experience, more intimate, more uh, engaged. Um, it's like being at a concert, basically, yeah. except it's virtual. And <laughs> my friend had invented that over 10 years ago. And I've been hearing about it, but never... I, he would talk about it. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah. cool, great. I don't know. <laughs> because I'm like, I'm out touring. Why would I want to do shows Online. on stage? Yeah. I don't want to get yeah. it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then I came back. I did my last show uh, March 13th uh, in Arizona. And I came back and I go, that's it. I know <laughs> what to do. So I had a studio at my house. So I had to figure out how to incorporate the sound into the internet. <laughs> and literally the first it's very funny. I say this as a joke. The, the, the first show was literally, well, I figured out how to incorporate the sound, the studio into the computer. So that was, I got the right interface, whatever. Yeah. And yeah. then I would literally just open my laptop and do the show like that. And I was like, oh, this looks pretty good. <laughs> now, it's not like that anymore. <laughs> I, I have 
automated camera sliders. I'm using these black magic design cameras, 6K, 4K. I, I mean, if you oh, saw wow. what it looked crazy. <laughs> but I'm telling you, five months ago, I did not know the difference between upload speed and download <laughs> speed. No clue. We're becoming you know. expert you know, producing our own shows, uh, Michael. Yeah. I am I am now the lighting director, I'm the camera <laughs> operator, I'm the host, I'm the musician, I'm the music director. I mean, it's unbelievable. But you know, that's what we do as humans. We adapt. So we we get to adapt. the impossible and then we figure out how, what do we do with this? Yes. You know? This is a conversation I had with almost all my guests. I mean, some of them, like I had last week, uh, China Forbes or Pink Martini. They are also just like you, always on tour. But she said it's been like a, a calming experience. She she realized that she could, could spend more time with her son. She yeah. always had that passion for interior designer. So yeah. besides uh, doing your concert, by the way, when is your next uh, stage at, uh, concert that, that people can uh, this enjoy? Sunday. Uh, this Sunday. Uh, no, oh. I'm sorry. I, I'm taking a Sunday off. I, uh, <laughs> this will be so the following Sunday. Um, uh, the August 30th? 30, August 30th at uh, 5, 5 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Yes. Um, there's, yeah. I, I, I think yeah, I have. August JJ is 30th. looking for a. I took a screenshot of your thing. So, guys, is next, uh, not this Sunday, the Sunday afterward. And what That's time, right. Michael? Uh, five five o'clock Pacific day, Pacific time, which is five eight p.m. Yeah. for you guys in yeah. uh, New York yeah. City, uh, right? And so. uh, the show is 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 one one cool thing. And I always wanted to do this for my live shows, but it's not possible. But um, every show that I do on stage, um, it's a different theme, yeah. different sets of music. Sometimes I feature one of my albums. Sometimes I feature music from other people. Sometimes uh, I I like. I had a show Sunday, which was the music of David Sanborn, which is mm. my uh, hero, my mentor, the reason why I play the saxophone. And so I can design each show to a whole nother. So, so each show is br a brand new thing. And yet I could never do that live. For one thing, I would have to go and go into the studio and rehearse with my band, a brand new show every week. <laughs> you know, we usually what we do is we rehearse and then go tour for a year with that show, That's you true. know. So it's kind of an I've never worked so hard in my life, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I have to, you know, sometimes I'll do my first or second album in entirety and I have to go relearn music that I haven't played for 25 years. I don't remember half of it, you know, <laughs> so it's it's a lot of work putting them together, but it's a great challenge for me. It really is. I'm having fun with it. Yeah, That's, I do the similar thing every Sunday on my Patreon page and I do the same. I take the, the right. chance to sing song. Normally I never get to right. sing. Right. original exactly. of covers I've never sang right. and I'm like okay let's try some so it's an experience you said that uh, uh, you started to play the saxophone uh, but you you played the clarinet first right that was your yeah, first I actually, instrument I've gone through a couple of different things my very first instrument was piano and I oh. was horrible oh. I, it was ter I was terrible just ter you know I, I tell you how bad I was I, I um uh, my grandfather, who was uh, a famous musician in Denmark, he he um, he knew of a piano teacher, and it was this lovely lady that I would go to, and I would, she would finally call him and say, you know, your grandson is one of the nicest boys I've ever met, <laughs> but he can't play a note of piano, and all he wants to do the whole time is just sit and chat, and he has a lot of stories. And, and so that didn't work out. So then I start playing the drum a little bit because I became a part of the um, Tivoli Boys Guard, which is a marching band inside the famous Tivoli Gardens. Um, so that lasted for a couple of years. And then I picked up the clarinet because I got an opportunity to get in the band of the Tivoli yeah. Boys Guard. And then right around 13 and 14, the clarinet just wasn't my thing. <laughs> and one day I turn on the radio and there is David Sanborn. Hey. And I was like, what is this and who is this and how does he make the saxophone sound this way? And I mean, it just changed everything for me. Yeah, I, I, as I said, saxophone and bass are two of my favorite uh, instruments. Bass because I like the groove and he has some, some notes yeah. and ring to it. And saxophone for me is a very sexy instrument. And uh, I, I saw that in many interviews you said that you, you switched from clarinet to saxophone also because you had more chances with the girls, right? <laughs> no chances with the girls on the clarinet. So I'm so sorry to say, but that, especially when you're 14, not happening. Not, 
But you know, I'm you know I'm gonna get a lot of angry clarinet players emailing me. It's a me beautiful out, but, instrument. If yeah. you want to have snakes coming down from 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 something, right? That's what they well, use. Well, you know, I mean, a to be honest, to with you, I will I will say something. Um, you know, I do enjoy classical music. Yes. Uh, and I think one of the most beautiful concerto written ever is uh, Mozart's clarinet concerto. I think that's one of the most beautiful pieces of classical music. Uh, so I that I will say that. Hopefully that'll save me a little bit, you know, from, you know. But we love the all the clarinet players out there, but we are more into saxophone. And today we are, you know, we, we are, we are talking with Mike Delindo. He's royalty of saxophone. Talking of royalty, but you mentioned the Tivoli Garden. I yes. do always the birthday and events, and a couple of days ago they opened, uh, I don't know, 40, 50 years. We talk about the Tivoli Garden in my uh, things. I didn't know you played over there in the marching band. But talking of royalty, you played for the royal family because you are from Copenhagen, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, yes. w when did you move to the United States? I'm, I came to America uh, September 90, I mean, September uh, 1990, yeah. September 1990. Wow. What, what and, brought um, you here? The chances? Were you invited by somebody? I was kind of sort of invited, and then I invited myself a little bit too. Uh, I um, I had um, it's it's I've told this story many times, but I I was 18 years old. Yeah. Walking down uh, this promenade street in Copenhagen, and there's a friend of mine that is having coffee with some guy, and she calls me over. She says, "Hey, Michael, come and meet." His name is Mark Schulman. He says, meet Mark Schulman. Yeah. He's in, in town. Uh, he's, as a matter of fact, on a world tour with Richard Marx. He plays drums wow. for Richard Marx. Yeah. And I, at first I didn't believe because it, he, this guy was sitting in jeans, a jean shirt and a cowboy hat. <laughs> you know, but it was just a thing. I don't know why he was wearing it. He was trying to be uh, very American. Just, uh, yeah. I don't know, but... <laughs> But anyway, we it, it was true, and and he was on a tour with um, Stevie. Uh, 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 it was a double tour with Stevie Nicks and Richard Marks. Wow! Like yeah. like 1989, something like that. 1988, 1989, and uh, we ended up become became just kind of we kind of hit it off right away. Oh, nice! And he invited me to the show, and I and I went and saw the show, and I stood there, and I'm like, that's it, that's it, this is what I want to do. I want to move to America and do this right here. And so I was bold enough to say, Mark, I, I, can, I, I want to come to America. And he goes, well, okay. He goes, I got six months left on the tour. If you're serious, call me. Huh. And I counted the days. Wow. By the day, sold my car, put a notice in on my apartment, told my girlfriend, I was 18 at the time, I told my girl, I said, I'm moving to America. And six months went by, and I called Mark Schulman, and he answered the phone. And I said, hey, Mark, is uh, Michael Linkton? He goes, uh, who? <laughs> you know, the guy we met six months ago in Denmark. He yeah. goes, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. How you doing? I said, uh, I'm coming. He goes, oh, uh, you are? I said, yeah. <laughs> All right. Come on over. You can stay with me. <laughs> oh, so, nice. He had, of course, he was living with a girlfriend at the time and had never, of course, told her that he had met me six months earlier or whatever. <laughs> and he is literally hangs up the phone with, with, with me and say, uh, we're picking up a guy tomorrow at the airport and he's going to stay with us. <laughs> it's this 18 year old or 19 year old kid that, kid, um, yeah, that, you know, that I met, you know, and she's like, what? So I slept on his couch. For about six, uh, no, what was that? Two weeks, something like that. Okay. Two weeks. Found my place and never left. Stayed, you know, in America since then. And Mark and I are, are still, if not best friends, you know, we're very, very, very good friends. And Mark is, a, I don't know if you know Mark, but a very accomplished drama. He yeah, not up, personally, but yeah. Yeah, he ended up going from Richard March, but then he he was actually playing with um, uh, uh, Dave in Dave Cos's band very, very early on in Dave's career. Because Dave used to tour with Richard Marks as well, and um, but Mark ended up Mark ended up becoming a member of Foreigner, and yeah. Simple Minds, and then he spent his last ten years on tour with both Cher and Pink. So you know, but 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 Beautiful. he came through. He came through with this kid that just wanted to come to America. You know. 
which bring me to a question and normally I always have at the end of the show we have sometimes young kids watching and they when they see the interview with people like you that have accomplished so much if there is a young kid watching what would you say was the the key of your success the fact that you can you, 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 when do you think your your career really started and took this this path well, of, through success well those are no, I think those are two different things or two different questions the, the first question is what type of a advice or what yeah. type of thing would you say yeah. to somebody that that has dreams or just starting yeah. out or, or want to do something like that my advice would to be go for it absolutely go for it if you're from another country and you want to move to america or move somewhere else where you feel there's better opportunities just do it yes and don't talk yourself out of it by saying how difficult it is or Or what am I supposed to do? You'll figure it out. It's going to be tough, but you'll figure it out. Just do it and figure out. The, 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 I, I told myself, you know, but again, you're also 19 years old. 20, I was 20. Ah, you know, how bad can it be? It'll be fine. <laughs> It's bad. It's bad. It's yeah. not easy. I'll It's tell you that right now. You know, you come over <laughs> to a new country like America from Denmark and you say, here I am. People go, uh, yeah, and so, <laughs> you know. Um, but but you know what? I'm glad I didn't know what I was in for because I would have talked myself out of it, you know, leaving my family, leaving everything that I knew what was, but to go to the unknown. But look, 30 years later, yeah. imagine if I hadn't done that. The second question is, of, of would you ask me what was sort of the first thing for me Yeah. Uh, that, that sort of where it all kind of, it changed the The directive or the trajectory uh, it, uh, was when I when I got my first tour, which was with Bobby Caldwell. I took over from a uh, wonderful sax player Bobby's band named Boney James, oh. and um, that 1994. Prior to that, I was just here meeting people, playing weddings, playing bars, playing restaurants, corporate parties, whatever I could do to really. I mean, making money, yes, but to really meet people. That was really what, what the whole thing was about. And it's, I remember this as clear as day. I think it, was, it would have probably been New Year's 1993. I'd been here for three years. I was doing a New Year's Eve party at Spaco in Beverly Hills. Yes. And the keyboard player was Bobby Caldwell's music director. And after the show, I didn't know. After the show, he said, hey, listen, uh, Our, I don't know if you know who Bobby Caldwell is, but uh, he, his saxophone player is leaving because he has, he's got a record deal and he's going to tour with his band. And I think Bobby would really enjoy you. Uh, do you mind if, uh, do you have something recorded that I can give him? I said, I do. And I, I sent, ended up sending him a cassette tape that he sent on to Bobby. And next thing I know, Bobby calls me, you know, and he, and that was a little bit of a, <laughs> like he would just, call, he would call and chat. It was the weirdest thing. It was like, there's Bobby Caldwell on the phone, and he would chat, and then he's like, just ask questions. So who did you like listening to? So uh, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And uh, and then he's like, okay, great talking. I'll talk to you later. I was like, uh, what happened? <laughs> what, what happened? What, what does that mean? And then he would call another time, and he would chat some more. And then finally he says, okay, I'm going to send a guy down with some CDs. Why don't you listen to it, and then I'll call you back, and we can talk about it. <laughs> and then uh, I listened to it, and I, I was listening to, of course, What You Won't Do For Love, and Heart of Mine, and uh, Jamaica, and Coming Down From Love, My Flame. I mean, it was just like, oh, my God, this is beautiful. I love it. The R&B, the pop, um, it's perfect for the sax, you know. And, yeah. and um, so he called me back. He goes, so what do you think about the music? I said, I love it. I think it's perfect. He goes, Well, why should I hire you? He goes, because I'm your man. That's what I said. <laughs> I have no idea why I said that. Once we started, then he said, okay, well, then you got it. I was like, I got it? He goes, you got it. We start rehearsal next week. I show up at rehearsal, and he pulls me aside. He says, hey, you want me to tell you something? I said, you know why? I, I, I'll be honest with you. It was between you and another guy. Oh. And, I, and you know why you got it? I go, because he goes, I, I didn't hear you really playing person. I heard your tape, but I didn't hear you playing. You told me on the phone, I'm your man. Bobby, I'm your man. Aww. If you think I'm your man, then you're the man. I was like, I did, it was not planned that way. It just was something I said. 
probably out of not knowing what else to say. <laughs> I mean, isn't that crazy? It's, I have a question because you are the, one of the first European person like me. I, I'm Italian, you're, you're a Denmark. By the way, I worked a lot in Denmark. You have amazing uh, recording studio. I did something called the D-pop. Have you ever heard of it? What's it called? It's called the D-pop. For several years, I had a publishing deal in London, and they were sending okay. me to Dan to Copenhagen to co-write with, and I wrote with some oh, amazing okay. songwriters in Copenhagen. I had an amazing time. But right. besides that, so you're European like me. In Europe, it's not such a common, they, you're not seen as a, as a popular, if you say, I'm very good, I'm your man, I am the, here in America, on the other hand, they want you to, to feel very yeah. confident. Is this, I mean, did, I think me yeah, and you, because was, you that said was, that, that like you were American, me, I would say the same thing, but it's not, if I said the same things in Italy, they, they think I'm arrogant. Correct, correct. I mean, and, and you know, I think it was, again, it was a, actually a language thing, because when I said, I'm, I'm your man, I think really what I was trying to say is that I feel that there is a very good fit between the way I play and your music. In other words, today... I would have probably said, Bobby, I think it's a good fit. <laughs> Not I'm your man. But hey, listen. Hey, whatever. it, it works, my God. I it mean, so, hey, you were. Know, I tried to change the history, <laughs> but it worked, you know. And, and then again, it, it went on from there. Then um, I was with Bobby for four years. Then uh, we did a tour with Randy Crawford, a double Love tour. I met, uh, I met Randy's man manager, Barry Gross. Um, he ended up. Uh, talking to me on the, there was like a couple of weeks together. We did theaters, I think in Florida or on the East Coast. And and uh, he goes, uh, so what are you up to? I said, well, I just got a record deal because uh, uh, because of touring with Bobby. And and he goes, well, who is your label uh, and label people? And I told him a name. His name is David Shackler, the guy that signed me to my first. He goes, David Shackler. He goes, uh, I used to work work at Warner Brothers with David Shackler. <laughs> Let me see that record. He goes, my God, I haven't heard that name for 40 years. He goes, do you have a manager? I said, I don't. He goes, well, you do now. <laughs> and then and then it was like um, a couple of weeks later, he calls me and he says, I have an idea. Why don't you uh, why don't you come and tour with Randy and then um, and then you can open the shows. We'll use her same. We'll use our band. We'll tour all over the world. Uh, wow. It's like, oh, my God. Amazing. You know. It's, uh, I mean, you play also with one of my favorites, which is Michael Bolton. How did you sure, get to yeah. work with Michael? Well, okay, that's a, that's, you, you know, <laughs> you know, everything is a story, but yeah. that, it, it's, and you can't make it up. It's so crazy. So I was, I was on vacation. Uh, this was in 2009, 2009. I was on vacation in St. Martin at a house. <laughs> uh, somebody that came to a show of mine. We ended up having a drink after the show, and they said, oh, we love the way you play. Hey, we have a house in St. Martin. Um, you can use it any time. I'm like, huh. are you serious? Yeah, it's right on the water, any time. I'm like, I'm, I'm hoping you're serious because I might take you up on that. <laughs> no, sure. Just let us know when. We'll take it off the book so it doesn't get rented out, whatever. We, we rent it out, whatever, so you can have it. So I, I, I went there, and I got the house, and I was at the house, and I get a call from Ricky Miner. Do you know Ricky Minor? The name of no person. Yeah, but Ricky yeah. Minor. Um, he was uh, uh, the music director for American Idol for yeah. since the beginning, and also took over from Kevin Eubanks uh, uh, at the Tonight Show. But but Ricky Minor is such a great connector. He knows everybody, all the artists. He knows all the musicians. I mean, he's just a great person to connect. And he calls me. Uh, he calls me there, or he calls my cell phone there, and. Um, I tell him that I'm on vacation. He goes, well, call me as soon as you get back. So I get back a couple of days later, and I said, I'm back. He goes, uh, how soon can you come out to Burbank to center staging? Uh, I, I want you to meet somebody. I said, I don't know. At the end of the week, I just got back. He goes, how about now? Like right now. I'm like, ah, you know what? Uh, I got to go to Ikea. There's an Ikea in Burbank. I said, all right, I'll stop by. He goes, okay. So I end up stopping by, and there's, he says, bring your sacks, and there's Michael Bolton. Uh, and and uh, Michael had, had wanted to do a change in a show after 20 years, and he had wow. hired a new band, and then he wanted somebody to take over his show in the middle so he could do like a wardrobe change. He goes from the classic Michael Bolton where he comes out in a suit. Yeah. He, you know, he does uh, uh, 
Nessun Dorm. Uh, he does. I've um, seen the concert. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He does. Uh, the, you don't know me. He does go the distance from the Disney movie, and then he goes into the when a man loves a woman and steal bars and how can we be lovers and all the rock and yeah. roll, and he takes some time in the middle of the show to do a wardrobe change, relax a little bit. He has to. He comes back out. The, uh, into the audience from the back, stands on a box and sing When a Man Loves a Woman. So he wants somebody to take over the show and he needed somebody that could, he could give the stage to basically and not have to worry about it, you know? <laughs> it's a great opportunity. Like, so it was, it was kind of weird because it's like, you, well, you, you were the opening act for Michael Bolton. I said, no, I was technically his intermission, you know? So, but, but, so I would play some of the songs during the show with him like uh, like some of the stuff he did with Kenny G, you know, like Georgia and yeah. Soul Fighter and uh, You Don't Know Me. And then I would take over the show and play my music. And then he would come back. And it was supposed to be six weeks. Well, that's what I was told from Ricky Minor. It was supposed to be six weeks. And it ended up being three years, three years, 250 days a year. Wow. Yeah. And Michael was like, when I finally, like, I drove my agent and manager crazy because they couldn't book me any shows. They were like, we can't do anything, you know? So after three years, I, I was like, you know, I said, I asked Michael, I said, can, 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 we, can we get somebody in? I'll do some of the dates. And he's like, no, you're either in or you're out. So I'm like, you know, I have to get back to my, my shows with my band. So, but it was so, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. I can't imagine. And Actually, you mentioned, you described the show of uh, Michael Baldwin. I'm a huge fan because, you know, he's very famous and popular also in Italy. And I think I saw him when you just left the band because I saw him in New York, maybe, I don't know. Well, how many years ago was that, JJ? And well, I remember that at a certain point he's leaving the stage and he has somebody playing. And No, but that's and, my song. Yeah, probably was your song, but you weren't well, there is. when I they're saw it. Yet, yeah. Ten years later, they're still doing it today. You it's see? my song. But listen to yeah. that. And then I'm sitting there, and suddenly the lights goes on, and Michael Bolden is on on the little That's thing right. next to me, singing "When a Man yeah. Loves." You. I almost yeah. touch him. I didn't. I didn't touch so, him. So, so the weirdest <laughs> thing, yeah. I mean, exactly. So, so the weirdest thing is that I just in in uh, what was that in February, Mar uh, uh, February of this year, uh, Michael did. A show in Los Angeles, and I and and I, I, I invited me down to the show at the Saban Theater, and till this day they're still doing this. my music in the show, and I, I I couldn't for the sake of me understand how that makes sense. I did my last show with him in 2012, but I, I said, Mike, why are you still doing? And talking about me is like, I said, how does that make any sense? And he's like. <laughs> The mu it just works for the show. You describe the show, and it's exactly the show yeah. I've seen with the yeah. change of costume, with show. Nessun yeah. Dorma, and then yeah. your part. But you weren't yeah. there when I saw him. Talking of which, I mean, I, I, uh, I, the stories that we can tell about musicians, sometimes the opportunity comes out of the blue. Like me, I went to an event, and before I knew, two months later, I was asked to sing with Andrea Bocelli. For me, exactly. it was a dream coming true. But of they came course. out of nothing because I, w I actually, it right. happens because they asked me at, during a birthday party if I wanted to go on stage and sing Volare, a stupid Italian tune. I did it, never I knew there was somebody that was friendly with Bocelli. Right. A week later, That's they it. called me, would you like to sing? But That's how it works. It, it, that's how it works. You have to go, you have to jump in. Question to you, do you, you have collaborated and worked with some amazing musicians. Do you have somebody that you're still having your dream list of people that you really would sure. love to play with? Who, who would be your number one or two? Bro, I, I'll give you number one and number two. Yes. John Bear, number one. Okay. Number two, Alison Krauss. Okay. And do, do you know them? Do you have any connections to them? Well, I'm one degree away from both. Okay. <laughs> So, so um, I know many people that are friends with John Mayer um, and work with him. I mean, Greg Filling Games is one of them. Yes. Uh, Chris Bodie is another one. Um, Alison Krauss, do you know, uh, you know who, who Alison Krauss? Yes, uh, I know the name. I don't know in person. By the way, Alison <laughs> Krauss, a lot of people don't realize she is the top female artist that won the most Grammys. Really? Yeah. Like something like around 30 Grammys. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, just the album she did from the movie Brother Where Are Thou, that was six Grammys off that album. But yeah, if you look it up, 
Alison Krauss. But forget about that. The, the point is, her like voice, the voice yeah. of an angel, and she is very, very close to Vince Gill, who is my dear friend. So, you know. Which is one of my favorite. You know, I always make fun that, Michael, that if I was born in America, which I am not, I would have been a country singer because I do love country music and Vince Gill and uh, all the country singers, but Vince is one of my favorite. They have this honesty in, mm -hmm. uh, in the lyrics, the way they write song. And as a songwriter, I appreciate it immensely that. So you're, you're lucky that you know Vince Gill. You should introduce him to me. <laughs> I would be happy to. Let me tell you how wonderful, <laughs> let me tell you how wonderful Vince is. And he'll yes. be very embarrassed if he heard me say this or just because he doesn't, he doesn't want to take the accolades, but he is one of the sweetest people you'll ever meet in your life. The most generous person, by the way, uh, you know, he is a member of the Eagles now. He has been a member of the Eagles for the last, uh, after Glenn Fry passed away. I didn't know that. Yeah, he's Vince a member Gale? of the Eagles. Vince Gill is figure. in the Eagles. Yeah. Wow. Very, it's a very, so, so again, the story is that he, uh, he sang a, 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 an Eagles song at one of those, um, um, uh, uh, what, what is it? The, the Lincoln Center, one of the uh, honor, honorary honor things. Yeah, one Lincoln of those, yeah, events, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and Glenn Fry had just passed away. Wow. And um, I think, um, uh, what's, the, what's the other singer, the drummer from the Eagles? Uh, not, uh, um, the founding member of the Eagles, uh, the drummer. The drummer oh of the Eagles. Ladies and gentlemen yeah, he, watching, I'm sure we can ask well, people. He's the, he's who the, is the drummer of the Eagles, guys? Uh, he's also the lead singer. Uh, he's, uh, my God. I, 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 I don't know it myself. So. Anyway, anyway um, uh, Don, Henley. Don Henley. There oh, we go. Don Henley. Yes. I was Googling Eagles. So they, were, they, they sat and watched Vince sing the song um, and... They looked at you because they were not, they were going to stop the Eagles after Glenn Fry passed oh. away. They were going to stop the Eagles. And they heard Vince sing an, a song and they looked, he, I think he looked at one of the other members from the Eagles saying, I think we can continue with, with Vince. And so, they did. They, so they brought back uh, Glenn Fry's son and, and Vince Gill to take over some of the, um, some of the songs that Glenn Fry used to sing. So anyway, let me tell you my, my Vince Gill Yes. Story. So we had just finished doing uh, my Christmas album, and I actually went and, and did production rehearsals for the Christmas tour with Dave Koss in Nashville, where, where Vince lives. And we went out to dinner, had a great time. We went on to our tour, and um, Vince and his wife, Amy Grant, uh, do seven or eight nights straight at the Ryman Theater in Nashville, a Christmas show. Oh, nice. The, for opening night... Um, I had some friends in the audience of Vince's show and I was in Florida doing a show and I get a, a picture and a video and a text. Vince Gill is telling his audience about my record Wow! and tell them to go buy it. That's a generous, beautiful thing. I wasn't thing. there. I wasn't even there. I mean, that is how sweet Vince is. I, I just was, I, I was just like, he did not have to do that. What a beautiful, what a beautiful, beautiful thing soul. Yeah, that, those, you know, in my experience, the, some of those greatest artists, they are also the most generous. There is no no conflicts of of jealousy, which which is a beautiful thing. Right. They deserve all the success they have only because right. of that and the thing. I want to ask you a, a personal thing. So, so six sure. months ago, you became a father because when we played together. I think you were not even engaged to your girlfriend, right? Two years ago, was it? Maybe we just not met right around that time. We, uh, I, I, I try to remember. Do you remember when uh, was it we the end? Of, was September 17, 18. Yeah. Well, we're twenty twenty. I mean, yeah. I think we met in like November of seventeen. So everything has changed. Now you are a father. Stepfather of a little girl and father yeah. of a little boy, London. Yeah. Look I at used her. to. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, see, how Listen, you when you they come and give you a sign like that. I mean, yeah. you just melt. You, you see, just like you just. Mike Linton, the saxophone, now is melting away. You just, <laughs> you know, I mean, 
she is such a sweetheart to becoming dad for her has been so she didn't have a she hasn't had a dad you know uh, Carrie is uh, my, my fiance is an incredible uh, woman and incredible businesswoman too and yes. she was so business running her uh, her her busy ru yeah. running her business that she, she found herself like 42 40, 40 no 40 about 40 and she's like well I have no kids so I better get one if I'm get gonna one. have one so she, so she got a kid and she she raised her on herself by herself oh, running her business raising her kids so so Lauren haven't really had her dad um, since she was born until uh, Karen and I met and to get in to to fall into that role of being somebody's dad has been one of the most uh, amazing experiences and and now now I'm just dad you know I was Michael <laughs> for a long time now I'm just dad and daddy and and then of course to have my son to have my own son and now we have a fan like a whole family you know i used to just be my by myself in my little apartment in beverly hills and and, and uh, very you know i mean i was content there too that's i was happy there i was you know so focused and touring and playing music but that's all it was you know and and now and now you're a daddy it's that and everything else it's, it's like it's uh life has more depth i will say that and you only know that when you have a family or have kids you can only know that, that there's just, life used to be like this for me, now it's like this, and it's like that, okay? So there's just more dimension to everything. It's beautiful, which uh, I, I want to bring, I mean, right now we are all at home, we can travel, and uh, but when you start going to start touring again, are you going to be traveling and touring with your whole family? It's going to be tough. Well, no, that's just not possible because, you know, Carrie, 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 again, she's, uh, um, you know, she has her business that so she has to yeah. attend to. But, but, um, but the thing is, you know, my touring has never, you know, the cost to it was five weeks. But, but other than that, you know, I, well, the Bolton, I can't, I probably couldn't do another Bolton tour, which is 250 <laughs> days a year. But but when I tour with my band, I, I go for two three days a week, yeah, so and then I'm back for for four days. So it's it's fine. It it works yeah. out. Once in a great while, I'll be a week or two in Europe. But other than that, you, you know, we'll be juggling in Perth. The, talking of which, talking of Europe, you are from Copenhagen. I'm from Venice, Italy. Yeah. Have you ever been to it? There's always a question in the end. Have you ever been to Italy? Have you ever been to Venice? And can you cook? Well, those are all. Three yeses right there. <laughs> I've been to Italy many times. Yeah. Um, I think the first time I went there was with Randy Crawford when I was okay. touring with her. And uh, I remember this. I have a great story um, that not only you will find funny, but, <laughs> well, you will find it funny and scary, but so will all your other Italian friends. Okay. So uh, we went to Napoli. We Oy. went to um, L'Aquila. See. Si. We went to um, Rome and Bari. Okay. And I will tell you my, my this is my <laughs> introduction to Italians and the Italian culture. Um, I fell in love with the Parmesan cheese, okay? Let's okay. just put it to you this way. I would just literally slice pieces off the Parmesan <laughs> cheese and just eat it. I was crazy about it because I've never had fresh parmesan like that well we can't get that in supermarkets over here in america so i went to bari with the whole band randy we got one long table at a restaurant and you know bari's very famous for the seafood see si. città di mare that's right and we're sitting there and i order seafood pasta and i said excuse me can i have some parmesan <laughs> And the waiter say, oh, one moment. <laughs> and he goes to the kitchen and tells the chef. The chef comes out and stands at the end of the table. We're like 13 people sitting around the table. I really don't recommend Parmigiano. And he was so angry and he left. And the, and the waiter just goes. No Parmigiano on the fish. <laughs> <laughs> and people, everybody at the table, like, what, what did you what say? Happened? Did you say something? Like that? I said, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. 
I said, when, I said, when can you, when can you use Parmigiano? He goes, only ragu. You see, so you learn something, and it's like, have you, have you also tried to order a cappuccino after eleven in the morning? You're also gonna get the same treatment. Get the same <laughs> cappuccino is only breakfast, Michael. So <laughs> this is a funny, it, funny story. And anyway, uh, so I learned never to ask for parmigiano on anything other than ragu. But anyway, learn. so. But I have been to Venice. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, um, one of the cruises um, uh, was out of, out of Venice, and uh, I just w I just love that city so oh. much. What a what a beautiful, um, what a romantic place that is. You know, just lovely, just oh, lovely. And uh, and and uh, of course, it's very touristy. But you know what? It, it's to sit out there on the canals and just having lovely food and just the whole vibe and and um, I went on one of the little uh, the little wooden boats that goes in. Uh, not, 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 not the, the gondola, uh, yeah. Well, I went on that too. But, but, um, but um, listen to this amazing, crazy thing. So, um, so I went, uh, I went on a on a on one on a gondola ride, gondola ride. But I also took one of the the speed boats uh, from one of the hotels. Um, what's the the Denali? Uh, the Denali uh, right there on the Hotel uh, Grand Canali, uh, the, right? The Grand Canal. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's, it's on the right uh, by the. One by, of the, by yeah. The, yeah the, One of the hotels yeah. in the so Grand Canal, probably. Yeah, and, and that took us straight to the boarding of the of the sh of the cruise, of the cruise that ship. I was okay, performing. So I got you the Grand anyway, um, here's a, here's a, the wildest story about about all of this. So, a couple of years later, I do a show in New York City, at uh, at a place called. Um, uh, what was it called? Uh, some theater. And right across the, right after sound check, um, I go to across the street, which is an Italian uh, restaurant. And I and I just go in and sit at the bar and order an Italian meal, right? Yeah. And um, and next to me is an Italian guy, and um, we we started talking. He's sitting there with his girlfriend. We start talking, and and I ask him, "Where are you from in in, in Italy?" He goes, "I'm from Venice." Oh, okay. Oh. And I said, what do you do? He says, I, um, I, I'm, I'm a gondola. I, I, I drive the gondola. A gondolier. Yeah. Yeah, a gondolier. I said, really? I said, oh, my God. I said, <laughs> I, I, said I was in, in Italy a couple of years ago, and I rode on a gondola. He says, you have a picture of it? I'm like, yeah, of course. Of course. Who's him? Uh, so, no. Oh. So, anyway, so I had a picture of, of me standing on, on one of the bridges, right? Yeah. Where there's a gondola below, right? There's just there's another couple another in the gondola, gondola yeah. right? In the gondola. He says, "Let me see. I I know every. I know all the guys." He goes, "Let me see who that was." And he and he zooms in. It was him. Oh my gosh! I Where took like a random picture <laughs> on one of the bridges, and just below in the canal is a gondola, and it's him. And it's him. I mean, unbelievable. That's unbelievable. that's that's amazing. I mean, there are not many gondoliers crazy. in Venice, but I mean, still yeah. there are a hundred and something. So, yeah, it's so crazy. it's 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 amazing. But such, I mean, time flew so fast, Michael. We already yeah. talked for half an hour, me and you. Uh, yeah. So before we say goodbye, I just want to remember everybody, so they can see you this every Sunday, actually. Of well, I usually do three Sundays and one off. You know, okay. not always. You know, it depends. But but. Uh, um, you know, my website, michaellington.com, always has um, the um, uh, all the latest information. So does my social media. You'll see oh, all yeah. the shows and what when I'm doing the shows. Uh, but I encourage all your your um, uh, your fans and the people watching your show to just go to stageit.com, stageit.com, s-t-a-g-e-i-t.com. There's a lot of wonderful artists doing shows there, including myself. I'm loving this platform yeah. so much. But Leon Rimes is doing shows there now. Uh, Jason Morass, um, Joe and Jet. I mean, um, it's unbelievable. It's like because nobody's touring, so yeah. we're all doing this. And um, so yeah, so my next show is um, August uh, 30th at five o'clock. And the show, by the way, this show is called Singers and Songwriters. Okay. I'm playing. This show, I'm playing all music from some of the greatest singers and songwriters of our time. Joni Mitchell, wow. Paul Simon, yep. um, Billy Joel, cool. uh, Elton King. John, 
you know, Carol King, you know, just wonderful music, you know. It's, and um, so, guys, so, please all watch. So he's gonna appear in August the thirtieth at five p.m. Uh, right. Central uh, our time here in Las Vegas. So eight p.m. for you guys there. Right. And you and can they watch back on repeat or they have to watch only live? Only One live, time. guys. So you in That's Australia, right. you have to wake up early in the morning. It's worth it, though. You have to do it. You do it for me. You now, can do it for I Michael. Am do, in a couple of weeks uh, after that, I am going to do a foreign affairs special. There we go. Where I'm gonna, uh, yeah, because I, I've gotten a lot of people from uh, requests and emails from people that are in Europe and in, in other places saying, yeah. Yeah. it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Come on. So I'm going to do a um, best off, Perfect. Michael. So I'll, I'll play some of the, my most popular songs to do it at noon. So it's uh, so everybody can watch it. So but that, you let me know when it is, Michael, so I will be sure that I share with yes, everybody. Of course, of course. Now, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being my guest today. Finally, we made it happen, right? <laughs> thank you for your patience. Appreciate it. No, you uh, anytime, my friend. So I, I want to wish you all the best. I I'm so happy to see that you are so happy in your life, in your career, in your everything, and I hope the blessing keep coming to you. And I thank hope we can gather together. We can see each other again somewhere in the world. Yeah, I mean, point. I was supposed to have a show in Las Vegas at uh, Aliante on uh, end of September, but but um, yeah. I, I don't think that's going to happen. It's going to be postponed. But we'll see. We'll see when we'll uh, see when each other. It will happen. At a certain happen point, again, you know? world would open again, and we go back on stage again. Until then, so this is the sign for I love you, Michael, in sign language. So I would say I love you to you, and Thank love you. to you and your love family, you right and and uh, stay blessed, stay happy. And I will be seeing you, let's say, let's keep up with you. I will be seeing you soon. I like that. Yes. Bye, Ciao. time, Michael. God bless you, man. And that was Michael Linton. I, guys, I see a lot of your comments. Yeah, Jada say Fantastica. Yeah, my guest was great. I mean, he's such a gracious uh, human being. And it's nice for me to see how he has became even more sweet and kind, if that is even possible, ever since he's become a father of this, uh, uh, these two kids, a daughter and a little boy. So keep following Mike and Lindham. You can find him, of course, on social media. And next Sunday, I will remind you, he's going to be doing uh, uh, this uh, concert on stage at uh, 5 p.m. Uh, Las Vegas, Los Angeles time, of course, 5 p.m. for you guys. Now, without further ado, we are almost at the end of this 45 minutes together. We have to go through and do the birthday and event in history. Thanks to our friend Doug Hartline. So here we go, August 18, almost the end of the month, ladies and gentlemen. First, a few memorable mention of Saturday, Sunday. Sunday we were live singing, so we didn't do it. So August 16, this is what happened in history. In 1904, New York begins building the Grand Central Station. I love that building, as you can see me out on the picture. It's a very distinctive architecture and interior, and originally it was built so the lights could shine inside the building. Can you see the picture? Of course, we cannot see the lights anymore because we have all skyscraper around nevertheless i love to go there as often as i can and uh, not only when i take the train there is also a cipriani restaurant inside believe it or not a venetian's restaurant and he has uh, 21 billion visitors a year and this does not include the visitors that have to take the trains unbelievable and what happened also sunday was a memorable mention birthday madonna louise ciccone was born in bay city michigan there she is, on August 16, turned 62 years young, you have to say. Her father's parents were Italian immigrants from Pacentro. We went there last uh, Thursday virtually with my Jada live. And her mother, uh, where uh, mother family was from French-Canadian descendant. So she's also a mix of uh, both things. We come to Monday, August 17. Yesterday, we were not live either. Uh, honorable mention for yesterday in uh, um, events. Uh, 1807, Robert Fulton invented the steamboat. Uh, and um, as is Claremont takes his very first trip on the Hudson River, that's a replica of it. Hudson River is a beautiful place to take a trip when you can, if you are in New York. And birthday of yesterday, memorable mention. One is very personal. Happy birthday to Rita Monte. Happy birthday to Rita Monte. Is my dear, dear friend of the Circle of Love. That's me, Rita, Roma, and Filippo a few years ago at the Sergio Franchi event. It was her birthday yesterday. She's, of course, a radio DJ of Profumo d'Italia. If you are in New York City, every Thursday at 5 p.m. And also yesterday, Samuel Goldwyn was born in Warsaw, Poland. Of course, he's the co-founder of the MGM, uh, where the G in the middle stands for him, of course, which became one of the uh, best movie studios in history of Hollywood, and in particular, Hollywood musical, and we love that. 
and honorable mention of birthday, 1943 yesterday. Robert De Niro was also born in New York City, turned 77. I guess we all have seen at least one of his movies, and yes, he's of Italian heritage. And a personal one, again, 1974, Giuliana De Pandi, also known for everybody on TV as Giuliana Rancic, was born in Naples, Italy, and turns 47. She immigrated to the United States with her family when she was only seven, and not many people know, but I almost sang at Giuliana and her husband wedding in Capri a few years back but our schedule didn't make it happen uh, but she married and she's happily married so happy birthday Juliana tanti auguri a te and we come to today August 18 a Tuesday so and events today 1872 in the world of shopping we love shopping today was the day first mail order catalog was created today by Montgomery Ward there is a picture of it earlier than even Sears it is said to see both company uh, disappear uh, Doug is saying as rest have gone, uh, both have gone due to uh, mailing ordering through the internet. Yeah, times change, unfortunately. Um, and uh, today, again, also in history, 1873, the first ascent of the tallest mountain in the continental of the United States, the Mount uh, Whitney, is a picture here in California, happened today. It's tall, 14,494 feet. Quite a spectacular, beautiful mountain. And in 1909, the mayor of Tokyo, Yukio Ozaki, presents Washington, D.C. with the 2,000 cherry trees uh, to President Taft, uh, and they decided to plant them near the Potomac River. It's a breathtaking uh, to see uh, view, uh, Doug is saying, in spring each year. And we actually also went there. There is a picture with one of my virtual concerts. Do you remember? A few weeks ago. And today in history, 1960, the Beatles give their first very public performance at the Indra Club in Hamburg, Germany. Look at those kids. There is one more, actually. I don't know who is the fifth uh, Beatles member. And today in 1962, Peter, Paul and Mary released their first hit, If I Had a Hammer. Yes, that song. The song was also a big hit in Italy. Uh, Date Mio Martello, Give Me a Hammer, Date Mio Martello, by Rita Pavone, who's also having her birthday in a couple of days. So we'll be talking more about her birthday of today, August uh, 18, 1587. A very first child to be born on American soil from English parents happened today. Her name was Virginia Dare. She was in a colony that has subsequently vanished, but is where a beautiful Roanoke Island in North Carolina is located today. And the picture that we just show is a postage stamp that was printed in her honor in 1937, the 350th anniversary of her birth. First child born in America by English parents. So the first American coming from abroad, I would guess. And in 1657 today, Ferdinando Galli Bibiena, uh, an Italian architect and designer, is born in Bologna, Italy, and he helped design many famous places, and one of them is, of course, the Ducal Palace uh, in Venice, there on the picture, il Palazzo Ducale. And in 1750, Antonio Salieri, we stay in Italy, famous teacher and composer, is born in Legnago, Republic of Venice at the time, and now is near Verona in Italy. While he was uh, an amazing uh, figure uh, in the music of the 18th century's opera, we are, Doug and I, the most impressed about is students. Listen who were the students of Antonio Salieri. Franz Liszt, Franz Schubert, Ludwig van Beethoven, and even Mozart. Can you believe it? He must have been a good teacher. And in 1904, Max Factor Jr., I love this one, American CEO of Max Factor Cosmetics, is born today in St. Louis, Missouri. There he is. His father came from Portland and founded Max Factor. Everything the in America come from other countries, so they were from Poland. Most people today just think of Max Factor as a multi-billion dollar cosmetic company, but for those of us who are familiar with Hollywood, know that they started out as a small business, family business run by uh, the family on uh, Hollywood Boulevard, so he could customize makeup and hair color for the most famous actresses of the epoch, of the time. Gloria Swanson, Mary Pickford, Jan Harlow, Betty Davis, Lucille Ball, and uh, on and on. And their makeup studio is now a Hollywood museum. I have never seen it, but I want to see it when it's possible. And the first floor is dedicated to Max Factor and has all the original makeup and displays associated with the stars he customized for Silver Scream. He, it's really quite incredible, Doug is saying, to see how he marched everything match everything from the complexion and the personality of the star down to turning Lucine Ball blonde hair to red because it would work better for her 
and it really it was right because she's beautiful as red hair and today also in 1920 Shelley Winters was born in St. Louis Missouri again she won Academy Awards for the Diary of Anna Frank and A Path of Blue and was nominated for A Place in the Sun and The Poseidon Adventure and then she was posing with her beautiful uh, Oscar and in 1936 one of my favorite actors Robert Redford was born today in Santa Monica California and turns believe it or not 84 years old he's known for many great movies uh, of the 60s, uh, including uh, Net The Natural and The Great Gatsby, and Doug shared that pictures there with the pink suit, and he said that he remembered that picture as the cover of uh, a magazine, and he wanted to uh, be dressed and, dre and be elegant and dressed up like uh, him, and Doug surely did. And I saw The Sting with JJ a few days ago. I saw the movie The Sting with him and Paul Newman. I have never seen it. It's on Netflix. Nice, very fun movie. Happy birthday to him and another of our favorite gone to soon, Patrick Swayze, American actor and incredible dancer, is born today in uh, Houston, Texas. Needless to say, Doug is saying, uh, being a ballroom dancer, Doug is a ballroom dancer, he loved uh, and he had to visit the place where Dirty Desi was uh, filmed, which is Mount Lake Lodge in Virginia. And there is even a poster that he took a picture, uh, Doug, of the famous scene, The Lift. And in 1969, Christian Slater was born in New York City today and turns 51. I just love the movie he did with Marisa Tomei, Doug is saying, called Untamed Heart. There's a poster, which I have not seen, but I will make sure I'm going to watch it on Netflix. Untamed Heart. Happy birthday to him. Last birthday of today, 1970, Malcolm Jamal Warner. is born in Jersey City, New Jersey and turns 50 years old. You may recognize Doug is saying as a Theo Axtable. Yes, true, it's true. And it took his pictures with him in 2017 when he was having a big year. He was getting married and expecting a little girl. What a beautiful pictures, Doug, of you and Malcolm. So this concludes the birthday and events of today, August 18. We had an amazing uh, chat today with uh, Michael Linton, an ama amazing saxophone player from Denmark, but living now and being also, like me, part of the United States. He lives near uh, Los Angeles. It was amazing. Guys, uh, I've learned some positive things, so we have to keep positive. That's what we keep saying. We have to keep positive. We have to keep happy. This is sign for happy because we are love, we are amazing, beautiful people. We are all of this. So let's conclude this episode of today with something positive. Let's remind ourselves that everything is going to be great. Also, this situation will end. And until then, we are going to spend this time with the circle of love together. And on Sunday, with my team, awesome, we will keep positive because we are, all of us, we are love. So I will say I'll see you first of all Thursday. Thursday we have our a special episode uh, where we a uh, day travel with our imagination. We travel to Italy, and I'm gonna be doing that on Thursday, like always, with my friends Richard Michele of Italia Living, and we will be doing some fun things also on on Thursday. Then of course Saturday we will be cooking together, and Sunday we will be playing music once again. So I leave you with this: I love you. I love you all, friends and family and also all the people of my team awesome thank you so much for watching me and i will be seeing you on thursday same time same place ci vediamo giovedì a presto ciao un abbraccio da Though I'm here in my solitude, I know you are there, and in my heart I smile again, and so I sing here in my solitude, waiting to see you, same time, same place, and I can wait to say again, Danke schön, Danke schön. Danke schön, dear all our fiddles. See you tomorrow. A domani.